Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This video has nothing to do with firearms. So if you're only interested in cool historical firearms content, I would say turn this video off, go check out the main video that I put out today on the Charlton Automatic Rifle. Very cool gun, very cool video. You'll enjoy that one. You don't need to waste your time on this one. Now, if you're still here, today's video is about YouTube's internal policies. This is something that I try not to bring up very often, but it is relevant, uh, has a direct impact on myself and tons of other people who create content that gets published on YouTube, and there's potentially something important and relevant happening, and I wanted to bring it to people's attention those of you who are interested. So uh, I figured I'll do a little bit of commentary here up front, and then I'm going to tack on the entirety of Jorge Sprav's, sorry for mispronouncing your name, Jorg. Uh, I'm going to post the entirety of his video at the end of this. If you didn't see it in his channel, you can see it here. So uh, in a nutshell, what I want to get across is YouTube monetization policy is not just about money and monetization. YouTube's monetization policy is intricately tied to YouTube's uh, categorization of videos, their promotion of videos, or the opposite thereof, their squashing of videos. Um, the great majority of videos that you see on YouTube, uh, you watch because YouTube suggests them to you. And YouTube's monetization policy is built into the algorithms of what they do and don't promote, what they do and don't decide to show you and suggest it to you. So. I have been extraordinarily fortunate that I have a large group of you guys supporting me on Patreon, and that has largely allowed me to separate myself from actual YouTube ad revenue. That's not the case for a tremendous number of other people who are out there doing their best to create content on YouTube, especially smaller, newer channels. And so this while it has an impact, hi there puppy, has an impact on me, it also has a tremendous impact on a lot of other people. And that's part of why I want to bring it up today. So um, what Jorge is trying to do is, in large part, is basically to make YouTube a better partner for those of us who create content and publish it on YouTube. We want to know what the rules are for YouTube's monetization and YouTube's promotional policies. Right now, they literally will not tell you, they won't tell me what the rules are. If, I appeal, if, a, YouTube, if a video gets flagged and I appeal it, It'll get approved or denied without any input from me. I can't argue a case. I can't make any suggestions because they won't tell me. They specifically will not tell me why it has been approved or denied. I have to find out by random chance and guessing through dozens, if not hundreds of video appeals. And that to me is a huge problem. The problem is as a partner with YouTube, uh, what I would like is for YouTube to trust me as a partner. And I would like to know, like, YouTube, what are your rules? How can I follow the rules so you have the content you like? And if I don't want to follow those rules, then I can post my content somewhere else. The problem is, YouTube's attitude is, if we tell you the rules, you will figure out some loophole and some way to avoid them. And that's not the, that's not the, the behavior of a true partner. Um, and so, uh, I'm very hopeful that basically because of the various the, the data protection laws that exist in Europe, this action by Jorge Sprav and his YouTube union could actually have the potential to make serious changes and get YouTube to be more of a genuine partner to all of us. So um, I'm not trying to say that advertisers should be forced to put ads on videos they don't want to. That's not the point. The point is we need YouTube to be a true partner, work with us, and not treat us content creators like the enemy. So uh, without further ado, I will turn you over to Jorge Sprav. Thanks for watching, guys. Attention, YouTube. Here we go. Being a YouTuber is a dream job for lots of young people. But two years ago, YouTube turned the dream job into a nightmare. The real YouTubers that are the reason for YouTube's big success are getting censored, deleted, erased, and hidden. Making a living on YouTube is actually no longer possible. Many channels have entirely disappeared or are now reduced to a minimum. There is no job security. It seems like YouTube doesn't want independent YouTubers anymore. Because now YouTube prefers like channels run by TV stations or Hollywood celebrities. And for those guys, completely different rules apply. They won't be censored, they won't be erased, they won't be kicked out. YouTube is actually pushing these guys with everything they have. All this happens simply out of greed for profit, simply because 
uh, advertisers prefer Will Smith over the independent YouTuber. But YouTube should not be so sure about that strategy. Since one year we have the YouTubers Union and we have thousands of YouTubers that are now united and picked up the fight. The only problem is that so far we haven't been able to achieve much. But exactly that is going to change now. IG Metal, the largest independent trade union on the planet and the YouTubers Union are now joining forces with a clear goal to bring back the old YouTube. We have founded the joint venture Fairtube. And now time will change for YouTube since we have 125 years of experience in the fight against injustice and over 2 million members plus superb lawyers are now joining forces with thousands of YouTubers who are really unhappy with the way things go. Together I think we are completely unbeatable. Fairtube is unbeatable. We want YouTube to actually perform massive changes on their strategy for the benefit of the creators and for the benefit of the entire platform. And in this video we're going to explain to you how we will achieve it. And at the same time we're asking for your support. Hello everybody, I'm Jörg Sprave, founder of the YouTubers Union and we're here in the 15th floor of the IG Metal building in Frankfurt and I'm here with Christiane Benner. Hello Christiane. Hello Jörg. What is your job at the IG Metal? I've been a member of IG Metal for more than 30 years now. I've been working as a youth representative and as member of a works council and for more than 20 years I'm working full-time employed for IG Metall and uh, now I'm vice president of this wonderful union and my job is social justice. For many people it's not necessary to explain what the IG Metal is. It is the largest independent trade union on the planet with uh, more than 2.3 million members with a history that's longer than 125 years. But what many people do not know is that the IG Metal isn't about metal anymore, not just metal anymore. Uh, actually, the IG Metal deals with crowd workers and the working condition of crowd workers and has been doing so for several years. And that, of course, also includes YouTubers. If the uh, IG Metal once decides to enter into a certain fight, then they will not relent. They will fight this to the very end. And for us YouTubers, completely new times begin. It is no longer the case that we are helpless against YouTube. With the IG Metal, we have a strong, strong partner. Especially when the YouTubers are with us. We know from experience that together we can achieve a lot. And this is where the YouTubers Union comes into play. It's quite a young union, only founded in 2018 but already 15,000 members strong. During this time, a lot has already been achieved. Meetings with the YouTube management, even initial concessions and a lot of press. It's been quite turbulent lately, that's true. But only through Fairtube, our joint venture, can we make things change. And what that means is exactly what we're going to explain to you now. Transparency. Publish everything. Categories, procedures, rules. You would assume that everybody would want this, but in reality that's not the case. YouTube keeps everything secret. The rules for the bots and the censors, their decisions, the processes that they use to promote or hide a video, it's all kept secret. And that is not the way how to treat a partner. Justify demonetization and deletion. Vaguely formulated rules are not enough. We demand exact and comprehensible reason for every decision. Let us talk to a human being. YouTubers are human beings and deserve respect. No more standard emails from anonymous servers. People should make the decisions, not machines. YouTubers must have real human beings to talk to and not anonymous email addresses. Establish a neutral, 
Dispute Resolution Board. YouTube calls the YouTubers partners. But in reality, that's not the case. YouTube has all the power and this is not how a partnership works. If there are serious disputes, a third neutral party has to decide. And this works wonderfully elsewhere, by the way. IG Metall participates in the crowdsourcing code of conduct. This is a voluntary commitment about social standards by crowdworking platforms. We have such an arbitration board and it works well. Give us a seat at the table. The entire success of the company depends on the creative output of the YouTubers. Therefore, it is only fair that YouTubers can also participate in the decision making and the future of the platform. We demand the establishment of an advisory board that is fully integrated in all decision making and has something to say about that. Participate in the process. These are our demands and our goal is to implement them as soon as possible. And now, pay attention, C-level managers at YouTube. You have exactly four weeks to enter into negotiations with us. Tick tock, the clock is ticking. You know how to reach us. We're looking forward to that. We delivered our demands to YouTube in Hamburg and we asked them to enter into negotiations within the next four weeks. We have three main powerful strategies. Two of them are for the lawyers and one of them is based on your participation, plus also lots of smaller topics and issues. First, there is the issue of potential false self-employment of the YouTubers. That is pure dynamite, but because the issue is rather complex, we have an expert here, Dr. Thomas Klebe, certainly one of the most renowned experts on labor law in Europe. Thomas, what is false self-employment? Thanks a lot for your generous introduction. False self-employment means that someone is working as a self-employed person, but in fact they are an employee with all the protection employees have, like uh, protection against unfair dismissals, vacation and social security. There is some evidence that YouTuber may be falsely self-employed. For example, they are continuously rated and monitored by YouTube and only YouTube manages the relationship with advertisers and if you take all this information about the working relationship into account, it's hard to say that these are independent video producers. And if it turns out in court that YouTubers are indeed falsely self-employed, what consequences would that have for YouTube? Well, then the YouTubers would be employees with all the protections and benefits and, they, and that would be very, very expensive for YouTube, especially when you take in regard the social insurances. But that means it would really threaten the whole business model. That is why we want to see our demands met. If YouTube meets them, then YouTubers will be real partners. Well, there's a lot of heated discussion among policymakers. For example, they are talking about expanding the definition of employee. And one thing is certain, YouTubers need more rights. If YouTube meets our demands, YouTubers will be real partners. Then this will be no issue. But if YouTube does not talk to us, we will certainly put the question of false self-employment to the test in court. We will certainly put the question of false self-employment to the test in court. There are many possibilities. It will be interesting and exciting. The second strategy has to do with YouTube's secrecy, which could be illegal. Every video that a YouTuber uploads 
will be actually inspected by a whole army of bots and human sensors and then put into categories. These categories can then be excluded by the advertisers, which means that this video won't make any money and won't go anywhere, anywhere in terms of views. It will be a sitting duck. Result, the video will hardly earn any money and see very few views. The YouTuber can only guess why and he can't do anything about it. That's not legal. Under the GDPR, platforms like YouTube must give anyone they have personal data about a copy of this data. The general data protection regulation applies to all companies which process personal data. And these are laws that YouTube has to follow as well. And what happens if it turns out that YouTube does indeed violate the GDPR? Violations of the GDPR can be punished with a fine of 4% of the worldwide revenue of the previous year. In 2018, YouTube made billions of dollars, so the fine could be tremendous. Wow, a high price for useless secrecy. Every single violation may lead to another fine. So YouTube has to stop the secrecy. At least in Europe, people have the right to know which data the companies store about them. YouTube still has the chance to settle the issue without high costs. We are looking forward to the discussions. Last but not least, there is another powerful measure. And this is where YouTubers come into play. Help us to make YouTube better for everyone involved. Spread the video. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and visit our website. And above all, if you are in Germany, join the IG Metal. I did that months ago. Isn't that a pretty little card? <laughs> uh, the IG Metal is the perfect union for us YouTubers. The more YouTube members the IG Metal gets, the more likely it is that we can end this and turn the nightmare job into a dream job again. On the website fairtube.info you will find all information about IG Metal membership. We are very grateful for everyone who stands with us. We have a really long list of actions that require your active participation. And we don't want to go into details yet, but I can guarantee this is going to be a shitstorm that hasn't been seen ever before. So YouTube, now it's up to you. Talk to us. We are sure there will be a solution that works out for everyone. Not only that, but what is YouTube worth without happy YouTubers? Come on, managers at YouTube. You know that we can only keep the platform successful if we work together on this. You now have four weeks to talk to us. So the countdown is ticking. And you can actually follow what is happening on our website fairtube.info. Wow, that's it for today. Very, very big day for the whole of YouTube. Anyway, thanks and bye-bye. Bye-bye.